Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1528. In this video, we want to talk more about dynamic arrays. And I've said this before, you are not going to believe this. We're going to create a cross tabulated report with totals. Now, this comes on the heels of 1520. In this video, we saw how to create a dynamic cross tabulated report. And in the comments, people said, but what about totals? Then in yesterday's video, where we had a conversation at the Community tab at Excel is Fun, which, by the way, I don't think the Community tab is as friendly for having conversations as below the videos in the comments. But David Milbrandt posted a formula to give us just what we want, cross tabulated report dynamic with spilled arrays with totals for the rows and the columns. If I come up here and change customer to region, just like that, cross tab and totals. This is why our online Excel team is so awesome, because our teammate David provided an awesome formula. Now, the original formula that David provided, I shortened it up a little bit and added the words totals. But get this, David said he's not only using this formula for cross tabulated reports, he's using it to summarize invoices. And he said there's already lots of cool uses for this. Now let's go see how this is done. Now we're actually going to use the if function and compile or create four parts. The first part will be a bunch of falses for whatever the size of the array is, and our totals off to the right. The second if will create falses and totals at the bottom. The third if will create our cross tabulated amounts. And the fourth if will get our grand total. Then we'll string the ifs together, and it will mash together or compile one, two, three, four different parts. Now over to the sheet 1528. Imagine if we had an array of trues and falses where we had the count of falses that equaled the count of whatever the row header is and a true. Well, if that was the case, we could say if. And in the logical test, we string our falses and true, comma. Notice this is value of true, and I want a total at the bottom. So I'm going to say total, comma. Otherwise, I'm simply going to list those values, close parentheses, and enter. That's how we can create our unique list of the row headers and the word total. Now, that's a pretty amazing trick there to take a column and append something to the bottom. I've always used choose to append things across the columns, but that's a pretty cool trick to append something to the bottom. Now we have to create this without this intermediate step here. So we're going to come over, and actually we're going to need our unique count looking up the column over here. So Control C, Escape. And we're going to use the if function. And then inside the logical test, we're going to use sequence to help us create that. So sequence is a new array function. Now for rows, I'm actually going to use count a to count how many unique items there are. Right now, count a, if I F9 it, it is delivering an aggregate value, Control Z. I really want close parentheses and now sequence when I F9 delivers an array of values. Control Z by going on the inside of sequence because I need to add to count up plus one. Logical test gives us one to five. Control Z. Now I ask the question how many of you are greater than count up and control V. Now in the logical test, F9, I have my array of falses and trues. Control Z and comma, the value if true in double quotes, total, comma, otherwise the value of false, Control V. And we actually have to add sort back in. Now this will be the row headers, Control C, Escape, and Control V. Now formatting, of course, I'm going to preformat it with bold. 
Now we're going to do something similar for our column headers. The difference is that we still had to count the unique items, looking up the column for product, add one, put it inside of sequence. But notice, because this is across the columns, I didn't put it in rows. I put it in columns. Then I compared it to the straight count so that the logical test, F9, gives us falses across the columns and an extra true. Totals will be put in for true. And then we run transpose, because we're going across the columns, the sorted unique list, escape. Now the inside of the formula where we're going to have four different logical tests. And we'll start with the first one, spill it, and see what happens. Now the first array we're going to spill is falses all the way to the totals for each row header. And back in 1520, we saw how to use sum ifs. We're looking at the revenue column to add. Criteria range, look up the customer column. And that's the notation to refer to a spilled array. If I hit Enter, well, those are the correct row totals that will go in this column. But remember, I want a bunch of falses and then the totals. So we're going to do something similar with our if and sequence. It will be a little bit easier because we already have the spilled array here where we can get an array of 1 to 6 and ask if it's greater than the count of 5. So right in logical test, I'm actually going to type a comma and then go back. Sequence. We don't want rows because we're going to spill across the columns. Comma. Count a. Uh, and guess what? I already have the full count. And there's the i9 hashtag. That will give me exactly 1 to 6 if I close parentheses. Now in the logical test F9, there's the 1 to 6. Remember, I need to ask how many of you are greater than a count of 5, which is actually how many products there are. Control Z, greater than count a. Uh, Spilled array, close parentheses, minus 1. And of course, Excel's order of calculations will calculate math operators before comparative operators. So when I hit logical test in F9, there it is. All the falses and a true. Control Z, and then I come to the end. I'm going to leave the false off because we want those falses. Close parentheses and Enter. That is amazing. Now I'm actually going to move this down. Now the next part is to get the actual row of column totals. And the formula is very similar to this. So I'm going to highlight Control-C, Escape, and down here, Control-V. Now the first thing is we need to not use columns. I need to use rows, so backspace. These spilled arrays are not looking up there. We need to look at customers and total. And then customers in total, minus 1. And then the sum ifs part, match function and index cannot be looking up customer column. It's got to look up product. And the function argument array operation, we're not going to try and get totals for customers, but for product. And so now with those amendments and Enter, look at that. Notice it's beautiful because this is an if, and we left the false argument empty. When we put these all together, we'll put this into the false argument. And then those values will appear at the bottom. In fact, let's mash these together right now. This if is going to go into Control-C, the value if false argument in the first if. There's value of true, comma. And now I'm in a Control V. Now when I hit Enter, wow, that is amazing. Append, append. Now we just need to work on the inside. Well, the inside, all these falses, is simply our sum ifs to get the cross tabulated values. As we saw back in 1520, sum ifs, that's the sum range. Criteria range 1, we're looking up the customer column. There's the spilled array for customers. Criteria 2, looking up the product column. And there's the spilled array for our product. So this sum ifs, Control C, if we come up to the top cell. And watch this. That's two ifs. So I'm going to backspace, backspace. 
the second if has a value if true, comma. And now in the second ifs, value if false, control V. That's our cross tabulated sum calculations. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And now when I spill it, that is absolutely amazing. We have everything but the grand total. Well, if we look at this array, there is a 0 at the very end, F2. So this is all I could think of to get that sum there, if. And then we're going to have some logical test that's going to pick out that 0. And then the value, if true, is going to be sum of the revenue column, close parentheses. Otherwise, there's the rest of that if. Close parentheses. So the only trick is, what do we do for the logical test to pick out the 0? Well, here's what I did. I took our two sequence count as for each one of our spilled arrays. And if we look at the first one, that's pointing to customer F9. False, 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 true. But notice the semicolons mean go down a row, Control Z. Then we have our second sequence, F9. Well, there's the falses and the true. But these are going across the columns. So when we multiply them, Control Z, F9, we get everything zeros except for that very last little corner cell. Zeros, of course, are interpreted as false, and one will be interpreted as true. So the true will put the sum. And all of the other zeros or falses will get the values. Control Z. So when I spill, that is absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to move this down here. And here's the big drum roll. Region. Wow. Now customer, we want product. That is totally amazing. What a wild formula. It is so awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to David taking spilled arrays a little bit further. And really, the truth is, this is only a few weeks we've been playing with spilled arrays, dynamic arrays, and the new Excel calculation engine. So I'm sure there's lots more amazing formulas to come. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.